And with Andrew Walker's report from Jamaica, which was read in the studio, we end this edition of Radio Newsreel. This is Pamela Crichton in London. Transmission on 5.975 MHz for listeners in South Asia, Burma, North Africa, the Mediterranean area and Europe is now closing. World service programs continue with new ideas in a few moments at midnight 30. That will be followed by Christian newsletter. And then we have Round the Horn at midnight 45 Greenwich Mean Time. Outlook is on the air at 01.15 Greenwich Mean Time. BBC World Service. Ideas. Hello again, Chris Pickerton here with yet another batch of products from British industry. And it's the usual mixture of large and small. So keep pencil and paper handy in case you hear of something you'd like to know more about. I'll give you our address in a moment. But let's first tell you what we'll discuss this week. Well, the acre meter can be a money saver to the farmer. And for the gardener, there's an adjustable lawn rake. We have a portable charging generator, especially useful for vehicles in the haulage or farming industries. And there's a gadget for use at meetings or exhibitions. Now, if you're specially interested in any of the products we'll be talking about in this program, you can write to us, and we'll ask the suppliers to send you further details. Here's our address. BBC, New Ideas, Edition 833, Bush House, London. Right, let's get down to business. And our first item is something of special interest to the farmer. A very useful gadget, this, especially today when the cost of chemicals of all kinds is going up by leaps and bounds. Are you applying the correct amount of fertilizer or chemical spray? Are you working at the optimum speed for the job? Well, these are just two of the questions that cost-conscious farmers are asking, and to which a British manufacturer has an ingenious answer. And the answer is to buy a device called an acre meter. This measures the area you work and not the distance you travel. And there's an essential difference between the two figures. As you work in the fields, you can get an immediate reading for the level of your spraying, fertilizer spreading, seeding, or even a precise indication of the size of the plot you have to plant. The acre meter unit, or it can be set for hectares just as easily, is a little box fitted in front of the tractor driver. It works off the tractor battery, and it consists of a mini computer with seven knobs and a dial, from which you can see at a glance the area you've covered. All you have to do is to measure the circumference of the front wheel and register this on the three knobs at the top of the panel. The actual working width of the implement, whatever it might be, from a forage harvester to a potato planter, is then registered on the lower three knobs. The seventh knob is a clever little device which makes allowance for any wheel slip or other obstacle to forward motion. There are two transducers, one fitted to the front wheel, which sends signals on distance travel to the acre meter, and the other, fitted on the implement, registers every time the machine is taken out of action at the headlands and so on. This information is instantly digested by the acre meter and the exact area worked is shown automatically on the dial on the box. Once you've got that information, you can work out whether the seed or plants, the fertilizer or the pesticide is at the correct level. You can do this on the back of an envelope. It's as simple as that. The acre meter costs 150 pounds sterling in Britain and it could easily pay for itself in one season at today's prices for raw materials. The gardeners amongst you will of course know the lawn rake, that piece of gardening equipment with its long curved wiry prongs to gather the leaves, or dare I describe it as tickle the lawn. 
but to loosen the surface you'd preferably have the tines a bit closer together than when sweeping the leaves. A British tools firm has now fitted a simple slide device to the lawn rake by which you can alter the flexibility of the tines, widespread for leaf gathering and firm and close for lawn scarifying. A wooden handled version of this lawn rake is available here for about £1.75 pence, and one with a polypropylene handle costs about a pound more. Now to the private motorist, a flat battery is little more than a nuisance. Using a home or garage charger, it takes about two or three hours to get a useful charge into a completely flat battery. But for a haulage contractor, or anywhere in industry for that matter, a relatively short delay with a heavy lorry off the road can be very costly indeed. There are, of course, high-powered booster charging units, but they're usually cumbersome and expensive. But now there's a completely portable charging generator on the market which can charge a flat battery fast enough for a vehicle to be started within a few minutes. This Dilec unit is quite small compared with most chargers of its type. It weighs just 19 kilos and measures about 60 by 40 by 30 centimeters. The unit consists of a small petrol engine and an alternator interconnected by a vertical shaft. On the front of the strong glass fibre reinforced casing is a meter which shows the charging rate and terminals for the three and a half metres long connecting cables which carry the power to the battery. When not in use these cables can be coiled away in a compartment inside the casing. The Dilex charger is designed to recharge 12 volt batteries. It's rated at 400 watts and can deliver up to 35 amps. And according to the manufacturers a flat car battery can be charged enough to start the car within five minutes and a lorry would take only about 10 minutes. And it's very economical too. Fuel consumption is just over a litre an hour. At a price of less than £100, the Dilec charger is a lot cheaper than most professional chargers. And in, for instance, the construction industry or haulage, it can save a lot of productive time. And although the Dilec charger is intended for recharging batteries, it can, of course, also be used as a low-voltage source for a variety of operations in boating, camping, caravanning, and so on. If you've ever been to a conference, a meeting, or an exhibition, you'll know how difficult it is to remember who's who. Of course, name badges of some kind have been in use for a long time. Those you can attach with a safety pin to the lapel, or in the case of ladies, to a dress if the material is not too delicate. And recently, those self-adhesive strips. But the latest gadget for these occasions did make us wonder why this wasn't thought of before. It's quite simply a plastic holder which slides into the breast pocket of a suit. It has two separate sections. Both open at one side so that you can slide useful information in. The top section is only a four centimetre slot for, say, the name or position of the guest. This part is a bit wider than the bottom section so that it's prevented from sliding down into the breast pocket out of sight. The bottom part, not normally visible, can be used by the organisers of a meeting or an exhibition to provide the wearer with useful further details. The names of other people present, the agenda of the meeting, selling information about a product or something like that. In England, these top pocket name and detail holders are available in quantities of 50 and more. 50 would cost five pounds, but there would be substantial reductions for larger orders. And by the way, for the ladies, there's a similar holder with a self-adhesive backing, which the suppliers say will adhere to any fabric without marking. And I'm afraid that that must be all for another week. Let's just have another look at the products we included in this edition, number 833. Well, we started off with the acre meter for the farming community. There was the adjustable lawn rake. We told you about the portable charging generator called the Dilec charger, spelt D-Y-L-E-K, which is especially useful in the haulage or construction industries. And there was the top pocket name and detail holder. Now let me just remind you that you can get further details of any of those products simply by writing to us. But please specify which product you're interested in. Our overworked staff, namely one secretary, find it very difficult to respond to general requests for information about a whole edition of new ideas. Well, there'll be more new ideas next week. Bye for now. New Ideas was presented by Chris Bickerton. And just let me give you the address again. It's New Ideas, 
Edition number 833, BBC, Bush House, London.